Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Today is an exciting day as it's our first episode to feature some brand new research. I know it seems like I love chatting to you about shark news and absolutely raging at viral videos, but being an actual scientist, new research is definitely my favorite. But before we get stuck into this, don't forget to check out our latest video here where a surfer had a very, very close encounter with a great white shark. Or was it a great white shark? The new research we'll be having a look at today, however, comes from a place very close to my heart, as I was actually a research assistant with these whale sharks for about three and a half months back a few years ago. Here's me donned up in my research attire while I was there as a research assistant. My God, look how different I look. <laughs> my hair is definitely not much better now though. <laughs> I had an absolutely wild time there. However, the site remains a fairly controversial one as the whale sharks are actually fed or provisioned to draw them in for the tourists. So without further ado, let's check it out. The research published by La Mave last week revealed that the whale sharks at the Tanawan provisioning site in the Philippines showed significantly more scars and injuries when compared to other whale shark populations around the world. The researchers used images from 152 individual whale sharks taken over about three and a half years from 2012 to 2015. They found that about 95% of the whale sharks at Oslob showed scars on their body, with abrasions being the most common type of injury. These abrasions on the sharks are likely due to contact with ropes and small boats at the provisioning site. 28% of the sharks were shown to have lacerations, a more serious type of injury. And again, this was significantly higher when compared to whale shark populations at Ningaloo, Australia and Mozambique. These lacerations are likely caused by contact with boat propellers, and this might be facilitated by their habituation to boats or the sheer presence of those type of boats near the provisioning site. The research also found that sharks who use the provisioning site more regularly showed more scars than infrequent visitors. This is a particularly important finding as it shows a direct causal link between exposure to the provisioning site and scarring rates. Now, you may ask, Chris, these are big sharks. They don't seem to be too bothered about the scars on their bodies. Well, issues may arise when these injuries facilitate the contraction of diseases, which impacts the overall health of these already endangered sharks. Lamave has called on the relevant government authorities in the Philippines to act quickly and ensure there's an appropriate balance between the socio-economic benefits for the local community and the overall well-being of the sharks. Speaking from experience here, this issue is an incredibly complex one and requires careful thought on both sides of the argument. While I was there, I heard firsthand how the tourism operation had completely changed the lives of the people who live in Tanawan and the surrounding areas. I actually befriended this chap here, Joey, who was a fisherman and was tasked with the daily provisioning of the whale sharks at the site. Joey explained to me that since the creation of the tourism operation, he could now afford basic amenities such as a mobile phone. And perhaps more importantly, he could now afford to send his kids to school. On the other hand, I also witnessed the real negative side of this provisioning site. There were often hundreds and hundreds of tourists crammed into a very tiny area here, all kicking and splashing, some of them accidentally kicking the sharks, and some of them touching the sharks on purpose. We had whale sharks crashing into other sharks, banging into swimmers, colliding with small boats. It was a mess. The provisioning site at Oslob poses one of wildlife tourism's greatest dilemmas which is at what point does the overall well-being and welfare of the animal outweigh the economic benefits of the tourism activity? So questions to be asked and answered by government officials in the Philippines and the researchers at La Mave, and I'll be sure to keep a close eye on this moving forwards. If you did want to read a little bit more about this research paper and some of the amazing work that La Mave are doing across in the Philippines with whale sharks and other marine species, I will post the link to the research paper as well as the link to La Mave's website in the description below. And just before I go, I wanted to point you all in the direction of another growing YouTube channel that I really think you guys should definitely check out. Ginge Under The Sea is a YouTube channel dedicated to teaching you at home about sharks and the marine environment. Greg has a ton of great content across on his channel and if you actually wanted to learn something about the inner workings of sharks, then you should definitely go and check him out. 
give him a subscribe and I will post the link to his channel in the description again below. Here on Shark Bites though, if you are happy to watch me laugh, sometimes scream at silly viral videos and occasionally learn the odd shark factoid, then please do give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bites channel below. Until then, see you next time.